All right, what's up guys? We're back at the Scholars Collective. Some things have changed here, as you can see. The audio is gonna be not the best. I'm gonna apologize for that head up or at the start of this video because we're not wearing lab mics. It's a little bit echoey in here. So I'm gonna do the best that I can. But anyway, you can see some things have changed. We're gonna tell you what we're gonna be doing today and what's left on this project. So one of the reasons why this project has been kind of a month elapsed since we last talked about it is because these tables here, if you remember, they were black last time we showed. The problem is the paint uh, was staying tacky and that was obviously not gonna work for our 5v5 setup that we were setting up here. So we ended up ordering these tables off Amazon. These are actually really cheap. So we have five V5 facing each other with a long corridor down the middle, which I think, um, works pretty well. So the only thing is like the desk itself is kind of small for the size of the 5000 uh, X case that we have, but I think it'll be fine. Even if the, even if the case comes all the way to the edge, I think we'll still, it'll be a little bit on the cram side, but that's fine. These, these are intended for you to come and use for a bit and leave. It's not like a dedicated setup for you to come and just make like an amazing gaming space. So what we're gonna start by doing right now, as you can see, all of this paint was sanded off back down to bare wood. So what I had uh, the folks at the Scholars Collective do is order some black, thick black vinyl wrap like you would put on a car. And we're gonna wrap these tables black instead of painting them. Because these tables are gonna be dedicated for the makerspace, which is gonna be like the 3D printers, um, the hands-on PC building station where you can use particular PC parts that we're gonna donate so you guys, they can come here and build a computer without having to worry about damage anything because it probably won't be working parts anyway. So that's what we're gonna focus on right now is getting these cleaned up and getting these wrapped. So let's, let's get to it. Oh, and then also what we're gonna do today is get the Streamlab arranged and set up with the lights and the table and the panels on the wall. And we got a lot to try and do today. It's gonna be a long day. The link I sent defaulted to the three by five size, but it's one of those you can select multiple sizes and the size that I, we knew we needed was six foot by five foot, but what they ordered was three foot by five foot. <sighs> All right, so since we're waiting to kind of figure out what we're gonna do with those tables, I, those tables, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> They have been nothing but a complete pain in my ass. But what we're gonna do now, yes, pain in my ass, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sort of start working on the Streamlab here. And so we got all these wave panels sent over from Elgato. We need to get the computer set up. We need to get the lights set up. We're gonna be using these, these channels right here to hide the wire along the wall. We got a lot of things I have to plug in too. We've got the, uh, the key lights that need power, two monitors that need power, the uh, tower obviously needs power. The tower of power. Wait, isn't that like a televangelist show? Fortunately, this stuff cuts pretty easy until I slip and lose a thing. There we go. So, it's a little easy. Got it from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, these cable channels. Even though it's a black cord, you can see this is a lot more presentable than a black cord just flopping along the wall right there. So since these key lights are actually gonna clamp to the desk, I'm gonna start by getting the key lights installed. Oh, I guess these don't actually clamp to the table. Okay, well, is everything I just say? Okay, well, everything I just said is a lie. These do not clamp to the table. Because they're the air, they, they clamp to their base. So it has a built-in cable management track right here, as you can see. And that actually slides. Right there, you can see there's like a track right there. The only problem with this is it just came out of the box, right? So it's all like trained with the zigzag pattern, which I hate. I really wish companies would coil, but whatever. You wanna make sure you have slack on here too. That way, if you go to adjust it, it's not pulling on the Okay, so this is the kind of stuff you deal with, obviously, when you're doing any sort of a setup. The key light airs, fa major flaw is their cord length. So you can see where I have my power strip over here, which is perfectly fine for like the tower and stuff right there. But what I'm gonna end up having to do, this sort of really sucks, because I guess I could have just done an extension cord along here, which I still could technically do, and take this out and save it somewhere else is this is all the slack you get on this 
if you have the light in its highest position. That clearly won't reach. This one, if it's over here on this side of the table, not even close to reaching. So I want to do a double-sided sticky tape and mount this power strip, which is a very basic one, it's like an Ikea one, under the desk right here, because it has a perfect like, frame to be able to mount it to, but then this doesn't reach to over there. So what I'm debating doing is having the um, owner of the uh, school here to go down to Ace and get like an extension cord, like a short extension cord. I think the shortest they have is like 10 feet. And then a skinny power strip to plug in here. That way everything can mount behind the table and not have to worry about that running right there. This is the kind of stuff that you sort of figure out what does and doesn't work as you're doing it. So while we're waiting for a different power strip to arrive to use on that table, we are gonna see if we can't do something with this. Our thought now is that we're gonna do this side by side like this. We picked up some black quick drying stain. It's actually black stain. We'll basically follow the edge as drawn right here. And then that's gonna be hard. I think I'll probably have to, cause there's paint still in there. So I'm gonna have to like go over this with a razor blade to make the groove. Stain the edge and then inlay wrap the bottom. I don't, my only problem with this is I don't know if the vinyl will stay stuck down, you know what I mean? Cause this is gonna be getting kind of abused. So only one way to know, we are in uncharted territories as far as I'm concerned. I just need to try and do this without it like rolling on itself. Yes, and stretching. So the only problem with the vinyl, right, is we can't get all the little bits of dust and stuff under there out. Like, I mean, it's gonna happen. So these little, like obviously this wouldn't fly if it were a car, right? And seeing these little bits of, but I, I think quite honestly for what this is, this will be perfectly fine. My only concern is about the edges lifting and whether or not we can roll it up. And so far, actually, Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> At least not for now. Not for now. <laughs> but now what I'm gonna do is get all this edge adhesive off. See if I can't somehow make these two together, probably overlap and cut. That way then they at least line up perfectly. I don't want to overlap it too much because then if I do and I leave it, then it'll just look stupid. Remember, these are work tables. These are not desks. I think I need to be realistic with my goal here and what the final look of these tables is gonna be and the amount of time it's gonna to take to do this. So we got the half down, which is cool. I'm trying to do the other half though was a complete pain in the butt, getting the seam to line up, getting all the air bubbles out. There's so much debris on the table. As much as we wipe it, we still end up getting the little dots to show up. Anyone watching this that's a professional car wrapper, it's a lot easier, I guess, on a super smooth surface like a car and you can squeegee it. I think you can use like a, a solution to help slide it around, water, whatever. This is not working on the table like we want. So we're gonna to go to the black stain now, and we're gonna see how it looks on here. This is a veneer, but it's still a real wood veneer. So we should be able, if it's just black, I'm not worried about the, the grain. I just don't want it to be the wood color. I want it to match the room a bit. So let's see how this works. So because the veneer is obviously not porous like the wood is, see that's a real wood edge, you can see how the black um, grain and stuff really shows in there. So that's actually pretty neat looking. And it soaks in far enough to where you could scratch it pretty far before it would start to show wood tones. The veneer on top, not as much, even though it's a real veneer, um, it's not nearly as porous or as thick. So you can see some of the wood grain still shows up. I could do another coat on this, but I'm not going to because considering these tables are gonna get all scratched up and screwed up over time with the 3D printing and the, um, look, it's already, it's already dry. Water-based, much better than oil-based. Plus we can do it inside and not have to use respirators and stuff and potentially inhale all these fumes. But I digress. It looks fine for what it is. It looks better than that, obviously. We'll come back to this later. We are now going to move back on to the Streamlab element as we're going back and forth here. 
my chickens with our head cut off because now I have the extension cables and stuff I need to get that table ready to go. Okay, so now, <laughs> this thing's going to get a little more ridiculous around here. We've got this extension cord uh, power strip from Monster, which is yellow, but it's going to be behind here. You're not going to see it anyway. This will now allow us to, with one cord, reach all the way from the wall to the desk. That's the nice thing about these tracks, right, is I can now just get this thing out of here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this one up under there. See? Amazing what, you know, 20 bucks would do in terms of cleanliness for cable management and stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I feel like too many people overlook. And it's oh, not we, that hard. We didn't even need any tools besides, you know, something to cut them with, right? Yeah. You just gotta use a saw or something to cut it. It fits a pretty thick cord like this. Only one of them though. You wouldn't get more than one cord to fit in here. All right. Now we can move on to the fun stuff. So I just use it. Uh, use it? <laughs> use it? Ryan, we need coffee and food, buddy. He said use it instead of use. He said I just use it. <laughs> <laughs> Need coffee. So I just used this double-sided white mounting tape to mount the strip back here, which that is not going anywhere. I love the plastic making that sound. That's how tight it is on there. So now we have power. One run to power, which is awesome. So now I can push the table back near the wall. I'll cable manage this at the end because I'm probably going to have to like double it back on itself and zip tie it to the back side right here because I do not want a yellow cable showing even though you're not going to see it. That's the idea. You can see it. But now, these plugs will fit. Just like that. Boom. And then we still have one, two, three, four, five available power plugs for our P or rest of our stuff, which we don't need that many, and two 2.1 amp USB headers. So this is actually a, a U line desk. Um, probably about the size of a standard desk, maybe a little bit smaller, like an Ikea Galant or Beckett type desk, but I'm trying to see with our two 27-inch Sonic monitors and the tower up here, and then these lights not being a desk clamp type takes up some, some floor space, right? Some, some square inches on there. But it looks like we'll actually be able to fit all these on here. So we'll have to figure out final positioning and stuff later. But this is the kind of stuff that the Streamlab is, a, is, a, is about for people to be able to come in here and sort of figure out like what works best, like what angle should I have the lights, where should I have the camera, like that's kind of the idea with the Streamlab is to let people get hands on and you know see what works for them. All right, so those both of the air setup. What I like about these is the fact that they have a numbers on the side of the pole. I know you guys can't see it, but that way we can actually set the height to these little height markers. So that way they're exactly the same on both sides. So you have to step back over, are they the same height? Yes, they are. So yeah, now is where we start everyone's fun part, the setup cable management. First, coffee just arrived, so I'm gonna go drink it. All right, so, so this is the Elgato face cam. Um, I was kind of hoping that they had sent us like the articulating arm thing that would come up behind the monitor, but that's fine. You can see it's got a, it swivels, which is important because a lot of webcams, I, like a lot of the Logitech cams don't do that. Sure, the studio cam does. The quality of this face cam, I've been saying I'm gonna do a review of it because I use it for my streams. I'm going to eventually, I promise. USB-C cable. See, this is the only problem I hate with the hook system is like, it's just, I don't. People are gonna be moving this camera around all the time depending on how high they sit in the chair, how short they are, and I feel like this is just gonna be flopping all over. Like I might even, I don't know if I can somehow two-sided tape that on there, but I'll try. Like maybe right here. Oh, that's rubber. That's not going to tape. Because I don't want this camera falling down and stuff, but we'll figure that out. So what I'm doing now is I'm sort of getting all the accessories and stuff here. I've got power cables for the monitors, display ports. I need to get our stream deck figured out where that's going to go. Then I can deal with all my wire management. I also need to put the edge lighting on here because we do have the Elgato um, edge light for the desk. So we're getting there. We're about to have a setup. So I gotta figure out, the next major piece I wanna figure out is where I'm gonna put this arm. So this is gonna be the mic, this is the Wave mic arm. This is gonna hold the mic. My thought is that, cause I'm gonna be pushing these back farther like this. My thought was if I was to put it on the left, then it might block the streamer's view of this monitor. Um, this is 
Caution spring loaded. <laughs> That's not too bad. Aww. Oh, look at that. As the spring load changes, so does the angle of the mic. So if it's like that. <gasps> That's actually pretty smart. That's dope because lever. So as it comes down low, look at that angle it changes on the end where the mic is. So I'm just, I'm worried that if I put it here, it's gonna block the streamer's view of that monitor. If I put it here, a lot of streamers now just have their mic coming sideways. I've never done that. My mic is always behind the monitor and comes up and over and when I'm done, I push it out of the way. But again, this, my system at home does more than just streaming. I play games on there, I just surf the net on there. Um, so I want the mic in out of the way, but this system is only for streaming. So functionality should be first and foremost the important part. So let me just go ahead and mount this on the side right here. And let me see, just, I don't want it coming over the monitors because I don't think it's gonna be long enough for that. Even if I were to put it like here, yeah, that's not gonna be long enough for that. Cause if you pull it forward, it's gonna go and hit the monitor. So we don't want that. So we need to make sure now with the mic on the right side. So what we did is we brought the lights in. Phil's suggestion was to bring the lights in some that way we could push the computer back some. This light needs to be tightened, but it's all sad. <laughs> anyway, to push the computer back some, which means now we could have the mic like this dangling down. See, the other problem is I want it to be able to be like this, up. That way your hands are under the mic. The mic arm isn't blocking your view of the game. But I've gotten pretty used to like at home, I have a setup that hangs down. Actually, I bring it down like straight across. My mic arm looks like that when I'm streaming but it comes from an angle, like straight at me. So it's not blocking any of my game view. And that's the thing I really have to consider here is this setup needs to be ideal. So we're not blocking any of the view, but I need to make sure the cable reaches to the computer. So here's the cable right here. Oh, that's pretty long. It's another USB-C? Yes, it is. A little word of, the, little word of warning. If you're one of those people that's like, I'm just gonna order a long USB-C cable on Amazon. There are so many different USB-C standards some are only USB uh, 2 data. So you need to make sure if you order a longer cable that it's the right spec for the device that you're plugging it into. Let me tell you right now, a microphone or a webcam, when you get one that's the USB 2 spec, it's not gonna work. I learned that the hard way because I wasn't paying attention and I got a cable, Amazon Cable Matters USB-C and was trying to figure out why the heck my um, face cam wasn't working. It's because it was just a USB 2 cable with USB-C plug, not that one, that's USB-A, USB but that. Just because it looks like a C, doesn't mean it's a C. So the wave mic is really light, which means I was like, how is that supposed to stay? And then I realized they have a perfectly balanced weight for the weight of their mic and the spring tension that's on here. So once you add the weight, because all mics are different weights, like my Shure SM7B is a heck of a lot heavier than the wave mic. That now allows it to stay exactly where you put it because it's perfectly balanced weight. <laughs> That's freaking cool. That's actually <laughs> legit cool. All right, so the mic arm is in. Got the pop filter on there. The cable's run through right now. It's just sort of dangling outside the table like everything else because it's up to do full cable management. So the next thing I want to do now is the LED light strip for the back and sides of the table. Once that's in, we'll get our stream deck on there. Now with the exception of keyboard and mouse, I do believe that'll be everything we need for the stream setup to then be ready to be booted and make sure everything is working and installed. I also, if you notice, I don't have the computer all the way against the wall because I need room to come behind here. What I'll probably do is I'll probably sit under the desk and scooch back, maybe put it against or away from the wall just a little bit more because then when I get everything all wired up, I want to push it back against the wall to where all I have to deal with is that yellow extension cord cable still. So this desk does not have any sort of cable management built into it, but it's recessed. And you can see I've got this pole here and this is the strip I mounted to it earlier. So because we don't have a net or anything under here, which I kind of wish that we had, um, like what comes with some of the Ikea desks, that'd be nice. I'm just having to really kind of get creative on this. Um, I might even end up getting some sort of a tray or something for real later. Right now, I'm just using up some of the slack by wrapping around the edge right here because the only thing that's going that way for power is this LED strip that's on the back of the table. And it actually worked out. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so the setup is fully in. We got the chair here. We'll talk about the chair in a minute, but I now want to work on some of the sound reverb in here. This is a small room. It's flat surfaces. Um, it's improved actually with this desk in here already because it breaks up some of the reverb. But I'm basically showing you guys what the before and after is going to sound like before we put in the uh, wave panels. I forgot what they were called. So the wave panels are designed to break up the surface and scatter some of the sound waves and absorb. That way you're not getting this nice, clean, bouncing sound off the walls. I don't know if these have double-sided sticky tape to mount some back here, because since you're gonna be walk or talking that way, you need to stop the source of the reflection, which is gonna be this wall. So we need to see what we can do to get some up on here. We have double-sided sticky tape, plenty of it in case we need it. We also have drywall anchors for these other walls. We need this wall, this wall, and this wall treated. So we got plenty of wave panels here. We're going to be adding some base traps. I don't have them here yet, but base traps in the corners is how we're going to stop a lot of the reverb. So let's get them installed. This is the before, and this is the way it sounds now. So you guys might even, I didn't do a clap the first time, and that door is partially open, so you'll hear outside. Everyone's being kind of noisy out there, but that's fine. We'll close that the rest of the way. So as you can see, I've got the wave panels on the wall, all three walls here. Um, it's not fully furnished yet. We're still gonna be probably put like a little console table back here. Cause remember this is the, this is what the stream is gonna see. So we wanna make, wanna make this pretty. I just did this light here for now. It's RGB, but it's set to white right now, clearly for the video. Um, yeah, so the last bit too for this stream setup to kind of like cap it off is our Mavix N9 chair. So Mavix is a huge part of the tech center. We've already showed you in the first video, they sent us 11 chairs. This is their M9 and we have 10 of the M7s out there for the uh, LAN center, which has you know obviously the 10 gaming PCs. But I chose the M9 for the stream lab because this is one, uh, it's got a lot of major functionality built into it, but it's what I think is gonna be perfect chair for streamers. Now, first of all, this looks like leather, but it's actually got their cooling gel in there. So it's gonna keep you cool for long gaming sessions. Typically leather chairs can be very warm. Uh, you sit in them, you sweat, you stick to them. But if you look at the backside, you can see it's actually breathable. So breathable leather, which is gonna allow you to no longer stick to your chair. But because of the fact that we're gonna be dealing with who knows what type of range of body types and sizes, we wanted a chair that was gonna fit more people. So it's got a wider base, a longer base, so it'll fit big butts like mine or small butts like Phil's. Phil's got a cute little butt. Anyway, moving forward, <laughs> just, if you guys can see his face right now. Adjustable arm uh, rest, the position of the arm rest also changes. Um, again, the height right there. It's got um, a ton of different lumbar support here. So this entire bottom piece, as you can see, this flexes. That way, depending on where you're sitting in the chair, you're gonna get lower lumbar support. This is something you don't get with many chairs though. Adjustable back height, check this out. So you can adjust the height to be perfect for you. Same thing with the headrest. The headrest has uh, adjustability on the way it tilts, as well as the height at which it rests. So whether you're short, whether you're tall, you are going to be able to get the support that you need. Um, it also has locking casters. And you can see here, these kind of have like the roller blade wheels. So these roll on the carpet really well, and you can lock them. I don't think you'll necessarily need to on carpet, but if you're on a hardwood floor, locking it would be nice, you're not rolling all around. You've got all your tension support for how tight the spring is in terms of your recline. You have locking reclining positions. You have lo uh, the lower seat recline position, the upper back seat recline position. And I just thought that this was gonna be the perfect chair for the Stream Lab. The Stream Lab is kind of like one tier above everything else out there. So we figured we'd put the premium chair, which is the Mavix M9, here inside the Stream Lab. So link down below, you guys can learn more about this chair. If you're shopping for a chair, um, this is not your typical gaming chair. This is a high-end, very functional, very customizable chair. So it'll fit you regardless of like your body type. But as you can see, the streaming setup portion is done. We've got our ROG keyboard and mouse with our RGB, or our ROGB. That's what it would be if it lit up. No, we got our ROG gaming mat right here. We've got our arm, wave mic, dual monitor setup. That way you can monitor your stream and obviously have your game over here. We've got our face cam, our key light airs, our origin PC tower right here. Yeah, this is, so we're not done yet. We have base traps to put in here, which we've ordered. I'm actually gonna be putting sound, um, I don't wanna, see people call it sound deadening. You're not sound deadening. Sound deadening is when you're stopping sound from transmitting through something. We are stopping reverb. So we've been putting panels on the ceiling 
because that's another part of the, the space a lot of people forget about. Anywhere there's flat sound like or, or flat panels or walls like this, and do the glass, you're gonna get bouncing sound. So once I get panels on the roof, bass traps in all the corners at the top, I'll also be putting some panels on the glass wall right here. And if they're thin enough, even over here, because glass bounces sound as well, then we will be able to start making this look nice. Like I said, I'm gonna do a little console table here. So you can have like a planty or something right here and maybe have some more lights and just look pretty. Maybe some sort of gaming nostalgia stuff sitting here. Scholars Collective logo is going right here. Jay's Two Cents logo is going right there. And then I did take these light bulbs out like I said I was going to because of the fact that we wanna control the light in here. Fluorescent lights have terrible CRI, which is color rendering index, um, which will make everything look terrible on stream. Key lights are lighting the subject. These are just lighting the room, so you have something dynamic in the background. These are probably not going to stay. They're not very good. I'm thinking we should get some Govee. Um, the same ones you guys have seen in my strip back in the corner. It's really bright, and they're just a tiny little tube light, which has an LED strip in it. Um, I think we'll probably end up doing that. And then I think that'll be it. I'm just happy we finally got something done today. I think the other thing we need to show you here is what we got accomplished out here. So this is what else has happened. You know, obviously everything's nice and clean and orderly over here. We'll be moving these tables a little more towards the center of the room. Now that we have these desks out of the way here, um, you can see they're all stained black. We've got all the equipment like on top of the desk now. They're all stained black. They're not perfect. They're not perfectly smooth desks because these came from like one of those websites with like offices and schools that are like liquidating. So that's where these came from, but they're perfect for like the maker space, retro gaming, the, uh, PC DIY, like build stations over here to learn how to use the computers. Um, <clears throat> all the cases are under here, as you can see. So we're still kind of uncertain as to how we're gonna do this side of the room, but we know we're gonna utilize the space as best as we can. So that means what's next is we've gotta come back and we've gotta build all this. This is like the amount <laughs> of hardware that is sitting here. It just makes me happy that so many brands are willing to be a part of this J's Two Cents tech lab here at the Scholars Collective in Long Beach. If you don't know what Scholars Collective is, I've talked about it before in another video. Go and check out part one of this video. I will link it below because you need to see that before you see this because so you understand what's on the other side of that wall. But in a high level, it is a, it is a learning center that is in downtown Long Beach that offers STEM learning um, activities for, that are learning based activities while also having uh, temporary childcare so that if you want to bring your kids here, get tutoring for school, uh, they even have uh, homeschool programs here where homeschool teachers will come with some of their students and they'll actually have school sessions in there and utilize the equipment that's here so that they can have an out of home learning experience while still being part of the homeschool program. But let's say you're a husband and wife or a, 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 some sort of couple that has kids and we're like, I need a night out. You can bring your kids here. You can have supervised learning activities. Like I said, there's tutors here. They even had like a, a they had a martial arts class that happened in there. But anyway, you as parents or guardians can go to the, the food district right here, go to the restaurant, go to dinner, whatever, have a night out, knowing your kids are learning and safe or here playing video games or whatever, and then come pick them up and go home and have a nice evening uh, you know, out as a family. Kids got to learn and have fun, parents got to go have fun, and it, it is a great concept that I fully believe in and I'm glad that so many other brands were willing to be a part of this as well. So we got one more video left. That's where we get all the electrical wiring in, the um, ethernet cables, the power, and 10 computers built with OSs installed, troubleshooted, tested, making sure everything works. It's gonna be long, it's gonna be arduous, it's gonna be fun. We're actually gonna have some of the um, computer science ki uh, kids, students from the uh, Domingo Sales College, Domingo Sales College come and help out with that. That way I'm not building them all by myself. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all of these stations on with 10 people sitting here, someone in there streaming, people over here building stuff, people over here creating stuff. I can't wait to see it. If you wanna see it too, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching guys, as always, we'll see you in the next one.